Okay, very good evening again, and thank you for joining us. So I want you, like in the book of Exodus chapter 12, to fasten your belt and to have all of you your lamp burning because we are about to move again. So fasten your belt, pack your belongings and uh, have your lamp burning because we are about to move in the name of Jesus. That's what the Lord said today for individuals. Okay. For this month of March, pray in line with uh, that exodus, that uh, Deuteron what am I saying? Pray in line with uh, Genesis chapter 26 uh, from verse 18 to verse 25. So Genesis chapter um, 26 uh, from verse 18. Uh, to verse uh, 25. So fasten your silk belt, pack your belongings because uh, we are about to move in the name of uh, Jesus. Now, as far as the church is concerned, the house of prayer for all nations, we are about also to change buildings. I say again, though we've just entered into this building, but we are about to move into another building in the name of Jesus. So not because this one is not good, it's very good. We thank God for that. But fasten your seatbelt, have your lamp burning at night because uh, we are about to move in the mighty name of uh, Jesus. So I will uh, go through rapidly that Genesis chapter 26, 18 to 25. And then I will teach you what uh, I've planned, because that is what God said. And I have already planned the Bible study for today. So I don't want to delve too much into this Genesis 26, but I just wanted to tell you what is the word of knowledge for the month of, uh, of, um, of March, the direction that uh, we received, and it is going to go very fast in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, now Isaac dog, I'm reading from the Amplified, he dug and uh, reopened the wares of water which uh, had been dogged, which has been dug uh, in the days of Abraham, his father, because the Philistines had filled them up with dirt after the death of Abraham. So there were sources of uh, supply, income, of joy in your life. But uh, the enemy came and filled it up with dirt. Now you are dry spiritually, financially, in all aspects of your life, you are dry. So, and he gave the wearer uh, the same name that his father gave them. Verse 19, but when Isaac's servant dug, in the valley and found there a well of flowing or springing water. The herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen. So there was a quarrel over uh, the well that the Lord had given us, that it was rightfully yours, saying, the water is ours. So they claim that it was ours. They claim that the building were theirs. Bid Mary here did not want to give us the building. The community, uh, the council didn't want to give us the building. They said it is ours, though we've been there since 2011, but they did not want to give it to us. Thank God. We moved into another place as well. It was not comfortable. So in this one, they quarreled. So Isaac named the place a sec, meaning quarreling. So a man of God is not supposed to quarrel. Christians are not supposed to quarrel with anyone. When there is a quarrel that is a dispute about who owns what, you need to trust God to open a room for yourself, to open a door for you. You don't need to squeeze with other people. 
and uh, God will open the door for you. So Isaac said, you know what? I know it is ours, but because there is a quarrel over this well, let me move elsewhere. So, so he called it Esek because uh, they quarrel. Some people in life would quarrel you over what God has called you to do. Uh, in ministry, that's what they will do. They would uh, quarrel with you that God did not call you to do that. Guess what? Many people even in Glasgow say that I'm not even a pastor because I'm not married and they are pastors. Uh, for them, I'm just a brother. That's why I call myself a brother, Jerry. So, so that those pastors in Glasgow, they will not have a quarrel with me. I'm not saying that I'm a pastor. I'm just a brother, Jerry. So that's fine. Uh, now, verse 21. He says, then his servant dug another well. So he moved elsewhere. He stopped quarreling with them. He moved elsewhere. And they dug another well. And they quarreled over it also. So Isaac said uh, that the name of that well was called Sitna, enmity. So sometimes people will be called enmity uh, is uh, public or open hostility. Someone that is openly hostile to you and to what you are doing. Sometimes people become very aggressive even the, instead of just uh, hating you in the secret place, now even they use the, the voice, the microphone to openly uh, say that uh, they are hostile to what you are doing. So you should not be bothered about uh, those wonderful people. Are they Christians sometimes? Sometimes they are Christians. So we love them. We bless them. I remember when I was to go to, to, to TBN in 2008, many of the pastors, some of them that town TBN UK here in Glasgow say to, to them that they should not invite me. Uh, when I've, I don't know them, some of them also in London, many wrote uh, to TBN that they should not allow me to be there. So it was not just uh, something that was in secret now, it was something that was now open. Like uh, Richard said to me, the problem are not even the pagans. My Those who are fighting me are actually the pastors, but God bless them in the name of Jesus. That is uh, uh, in the other churches where they say that I will never be ordained a pastor. I was never ordained a pastor there, though I did the work. I say God bless them in the name of uh, Jesus, that is it now, open uh, hostility, enmity. So he moved. Before the church, we started the house of prayer for all nations so that they will not say that uh, we are using the means, using the influence. We started the house of prayer for all uh, nations. So he moved away from there and dug another well. Don't be discouraged, keep on digging wells. Even if there are quarrels, even if there are open uh, hostility towards what you are doing, go say to one that he has opened a great and an effective door, but there is uh, a lot of adversity. So, and our adversaries as well. So we should expect it. That's it, that's the life of Christians. We should expect uh, adversities. Uh, uh, in the name of Jesus. So he moved away from there, from Sitna as well. He moved away from a sect. He moved away, moved away from a Sitna, and then uh, he dug another well. And he did this time around. They did not quarrel. God will uh, so confuse and confound your enemies that uh, the Bible says in the book of Luke, He will give you such a wisdom that even after you have spoken, even someone that is rightfully your enemy will not have anything to add to what you said. That's what they will not be able to quarrel. They, they will say, this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our sight. It is the Lord's doing. Nobody can, even the magicians of Pharaoh, they say to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God behind Moses. It is not just a mere man. This is the finger of God. So there will be no quarrel. Nobody will be able to question that God is the one who has open that well for you as given that well nobody will be able to contest the authority that god has given unto you the legal right to exercise that power the legal right to walk in that office nobody will quarrel over it again your own our own place for the house of prayer for all nations nobody will be able to quarrel no sharing it is ours it is none of that 
the Lord is saying, fasten your belt, pack your loads, and have your lamp burning because we are about to move in the mighty name of Jesus. So he did not quarrel over, over that one. So he named it Rehoboaf, a broad place. So broad places. The Lord is going to enlarge our curtains in the name of Jesus. We are not going to spare. He's going to enlarge the, 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 the curtain of the house of prayer for all nations, Rehoboam, for large places. That's what the Lord is going to do in the name of Jesus, in your life, in your business, in the church, in your finances. The Lord is going to enlarge your places. So, Rehoboam, for now the Lord has made a room for us, not man. Because if it were man that made room for us, they could have shot it. And it was not a man who made room for us. God has made room for us. That's why when he opens the door for us, even through the voice of healing, even through uh, what he's doing, nobody can contest it. Nobody can come and shut it because they are not the one who opened it. We don't owe them anything except the love of God. I owe no passing glass or hear anything except the love of God. I owe the previous church nothing except the love of God of God. So that's what God is going to do in the name of Jesus. And uh, we shall be prosperous in the land. As individuals, we shall be prosperous in the land. As a church, we shall be prosperous in the land. As a family, we shall be prosperous in the land, provided you decide to cooperate with the Lord. Me and my house, I know what we are supposed to do. We are going to serve the Lord. So you choose the way you want. If you want the promises of the Lord be made manifest in your life, then key into it and do what the Lord commands us to do in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, verse 23, then you went up from there to Beersheba and the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, you know what? I am the God of Abraham, your father. Do not be afraid. So in this season of your life, do not be afraid. Why? For I am with you. There are adverse, there will be quarrel, there will be open hostility. But the Lord is with you. He's the one that has made room for you in the table of greatness. Man did not. If it were man, they would shut the door. They would expel you from that room. But since it is God, they cannot say anything. They cannot do anything. They cannot quarrel over it in the name of Jesus. So do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you. In this season, I will bless you. And I will favor you. Because you found favor with me, I'm going to give you favor also with mankind. And I would multiply your descendant or your disciple. So get ready for an expansion of the house of prayer for all nations. More people are going to come in the name of Jesus so to become disciples. Here, when we talk about descendants, we are talking about disciples in the name of Jesus, even us. That are not the biological sons of Abraham with uh, full faith in Jesus Christ, we become his disciple, his descendant, all disciples. We are walking in the same faith of Father Abraham for the sake of my servant uh, Abraham. So Isaac built an altar. So you need, we talked already about altars. So build now an altar in your house, uh, in your own personal life. That's also what God is asking of each one of us. And uh, he called the name of uh, the Lord in, in prayer. He pitched his tent there and uh, there Isaac's servant dog uh, where. So that's what the Lord is saying for the month of um, March. Get ready for a move in the name of Jesus. Now, now that I've said what God has said this morning, let us now do my little Bible study. <laughs> we will build up on what uh, we started on uh, last uh, uh, Wednesday. We talked about uh, friendship. Uh, now we are going to talk about uh, discretion. We are going to talk about uh, this question. Now, in the book of, uh, there is, if you want God to do things in your life, 
you will need to be very discreet. If you want to have uh, friends that will come and tell you secrets, you would also need to be very discreet. If you want to be successful in life, in your marriage, uh, with your children, you also need to learn how to be discreet. It's very, very important. Many times we run into trouble because of our own uh, mouth. And my prayer is that truly my prayer and my burden is not just to teach, is uh, what I've taught, are you applying that in your life? Because faith without works or corresponding actions is useless, is dead. So if we don't apply what we learn, at the end of the day, Paul talks about uh, some, uh, he mentions women, but it's not just women, men also do the same thing. Uh, some women that, that they are, and men, I will add men, that are ever learning. So they keep on learning. You keep on teaching them the word. They are learning, learning, learn Bible study after Bible study, conference after conference. They will go from all the conferences uh, that are in the town. They will even travel to London. They will be crisscrossing the whole of the UK, going from one conference to another conference. They are never at home. They are ever learning, but they never come to the knowledge, the word that is koinonia to experiencing or walking into that knowledge that uh, they've received. And we should not be that way. Even if you know two scriptures, go do them. The difference between uh, the, the, the parable of the Good Samaritan, the contrast that Jesus was doing during that Luke chapter 10 from uh, from 25 to the end, Luke chapter 10, from 25 to the end, it is the Samaritan only had the, the, the books of the Bible from Genesis to Deuteronomy, five books. The, Fari, the, the Levi and the priest, they, he had, they had the, the books of the Bible from Genesis to Malachi. So with all that knowledge of the letters, and they could recite that. That's why you always see a lot of Jews are at the wall of lamentation. They are reciting prayer. When they are rocking against the wall, they are reciting prayer. They've, they've committed those scriptures to memory. Yet he could not identify who was his neighbor with all the knowledge that he had. So that's truly uh, what it is all about. Even if you know only one or five scriptures, Go do them. Don't just hear them. Don't just keep on learning. I, I, I was in Manchester. I went to, uh, to see a family, a wonderful Murphy family. Uh, and then um, one of the sister, Grace, he said to me, first because she was in a house. I've never been to a house in Stockport, but I saw what she had. She had a statue of uh, Tutankhamun, uh, which is an uh, Egyptian god. So I said to her, you have a statue of Tutankhamun in your house. That's an idol. Remove it. So it was a wedding gift. So she took it, did not remove She took it out of the house, put it in the garden. And, and as I was praying again, I saw it now in the garden. I called, I said, Grace, what are you doing? You've not uh, uh, removed I think You've put it in the garden. It is still in your compound. If you want the curse, continue to keep it. So how do you see? Have you come to my house? Did uh, Shirley uh, tell you the address of my house? I don't need to go to your house. I'm in my bedroom. I'm saying so, and then uh, she she eventually got rid of it, and the Lord showed me another idol she had. She had the magic book, uh, one of the book of the other cult uh, that is uh, here. Uh, it was on top of a fridge. I said to her, "I see you have something as an idol. Uh, it is go on top of your um, uh, on the your furniture. You will see that on top of uh, the furniture." So she went there. Uh, it is those kind of fridge that you put inside um, a wooden, um, how do you call it, the, the, the new kitchen store, the, um, the fridge is inside the cupboard. So she went up on top of the cupboard where the fridge was, she found that, that book and she brought it to me, I tore it into pieces. And then she said, Pastor Jerry, prophesy again. I said, no, I don't have any other prophecy. <laughs> this book of the law, apart from your mouth. I said to her, open, I have a prophecy for you. Open. Uh, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. She's read it. 
as she opened it, she thought it was not the deep prophecy. I said, read it out loud. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate during day and night to observe, to do according to all that is written there. And then you are going to see something is going to happen to you. You are going to make your way prosperous and you are going to have good success. I said, Gracie, I don't need to be teaching you again and again the same thing if you are not willing to do what I've already taught you. And I never told her any other thing. She called me again, do you have another prophecy? I said, I don't have any other prophecy, but even if I knew I have nothing, else, I wanted to do the prophecy of scriptures, the written word of God. So may God help us. So today we want to, we learned about friendships, so go and practice it. You re revisit that, the, those scriptures and you meditate on them, you study them, and then you say, now from this day forward, this is how I'm going to behave in Jesus mighty name. So we want to see discretion today because it is very, very important. If you don't have discretion, then God will not be able to share much things with you. Like I told you, friendship has a circle. So some people will be privy to some information that others are not privy, though we all are children of God. Some, even the church has, where some people are going to be privy to some informations and details that others won't have, though we are all part of the same church. And so if we don't learn this question, then there will be a problem. Now, we need to learn this question. The book of Proverbs chapter 2, verse 11. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 11. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. The Bible says that discretion will watch over you. Discretion will watch over you and understanding and discernment will guide you. So many times we fall into trouble because we are not uh, discreet. If you are discreet, it will watch over you. Discretion will watch over you. And because you have understanding that I should not be uh, disclosing such information to such a, such a person, this is a two. Uh, private and uh, that person I don't know them that well to disclose even if I know them that well but I know that uh, sometimes they run the mouth uh, too much so if I share some of the struggles that I have they are going to not encourage me but actually to discourage me and I'm going after I've listened to them I'm going even to give up when I'm discouraged there are some people that are cold. I don't call everybody <laughs> because not all of them have faith. Like Paul said, it is not everyone who has faith. So when I'm discouraged, I call a few people that I know that these people, they are my circle of three, they will encourage me in the name of Jesus. And they will pray for me in the name of Jesus. So, Discretion will watch over you. And understanding and discernment will guide you. When you discern that this person has uh, no good intention towards uh, me at all. So I should not be sharing uh, some uh, information. I was talking uh, with a wonderful sister. And all the sisters are wonderful at all because they are fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous at the works of God's hand. And my soul knows it very well according to Psalm 139. So, so I was talking to that wonderful sister. I said to her, for, for instance, if uh, you are dating someone, don't go and uh, tell everybody, pew, 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 I'm a dating so and so. Some people don't want you to get married. So, but you are running your mouth. Uh, and then another sister will say, aha. Uh -huh. And then they would go behind you and say, oh, why are you talking with such a such a sister when I am here? I'm actually better. I'm uh, more spiritual. I pray more. And then the brother will be comparing. Yeah, you are right. You are right. And then before you know it, <laughs> The guy who on the calls you. <laughs> no. So be discreet. 
even with uh, your relationship. Be discreet until you've discussed and iron everything out. You know what you are doing together. The plan of getting married is already uh, set. You even have the date for the, the wedding. That's when now uh, you tell, oh, by the way, I'm getting married in six months. And people will be shocked. Well, because you did not uh, share with everybody. You shared it only with few people that you could trust. You need to learn to be discreet in every aspect of life. Don't run your mouth. Uh, my mom, when we were growing up, she, my dad was not uh, home. My dad was working in another town. It is as if uh, my dad is living in London and working in London, and we are here in Glasgow. So that's how we lived. So my dad was only coming uh, every weekend. No, uh, five days a month. At the end of the month, he would come for five days. It would take us, to, it's taking 12 hours to come by train and 12 hours to go. But already uh, 24 hours he lost the traveling. So he would just spend five days with us. And then, um, how do you call it? Uh, summertime during the, the, the one the university is on break. He will come now and stay with us for two months, the two months uh, uh, holidays, and then you will uh, go back. So that's how, for the, all the years, the 18 years I've lived in my parents' uh, home, I've seen my dad only five years. I, I counted every day. You see, children, they, they count everything. I was counting every day that my dad was around. So I've seen if a, day, if a year has 365 days, I've only seen my dad five days. Five full days, no, five years of, the, of all the 18 years that uh, I have lived in uh, my parents' uh, house. And that was uh, the, the marriage because there was only one university in the country. And uh, my mom's uh, job was in another city. So my dad wanted my mom to, to work and ex express herself in a career. So that's the agreement that they made. But my mom used to tell me the reason why I don't have a female friends because they will be gossiping about uh, my marriage and uh, slandering uh, my, uh, my, my, my marriage. And as I listen to the gossips again and again, I will now have a polluted man that your dad maybe has a, a girlfriend among uh, those uh, female students that is lecturing and so on and so forth. So I don't want to have a polluted mind that other people feed me with negative uh, thoughts. My dad as well, on his side as well, he surrounded himself with only friends that uh, were either in the same situation uh, or he would live by himself. Even his younger brother did not believe. Even up to 2008, um, my, my, my dad, when he would travel, he would leave uh, one of the, the um, the gatekeeper would be living in the house to, to guard. So my, my dad's younger brother will come and talk to the, 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 the gatekeeper. I say, tell me the truth, okay? He's my brother, tell me the truth. Are you sure that there is no woman that comes behind? Uh, the, the gatekeeper said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I the brother, he's a really, really a good Christian. There's none of that, those kind of foolishness happening. So my mom knew because already, the way the marriage will function because of the, the different career. And my mom as well was always traveling uh, 14 days um, <coughs> uh, per month. She will be out of the country in Spain, in Italy, all over the world. She has crisscrossed the world. So I was seeing my mom only half a year, <laughs> half a month every, every month. So 15 days maximum every month I was seeing my mom. So I also counted the number of years that I've, I've seen my mother. So because of that as well, my dad also did not want to listen to some, uh, some bad friends that would be saying, do you think that your, your wife is always uh, here with ministers, with presidents, we have different countries of the country, people that are more influential, more money, and she's a woman. So do you think that she's being just promoted? Maybe this is, uh, how do you call it? Um, she's been promoted because she is sleeping with, 
are the, those people that don't know what true Christianity is, they would always have a polluted mind. And unfortunately, many Christians, the mind is not renewed. They don't believe that people can go live in holiness. Have a pure Christianity. So my dad did not have time for those people that would come and talk nonsense about his wife. So he chose his friends. That's why we talked about friendship uh, yes, uh, last Wednesday. So friends, the, the friend that they chose the friends very carefully. And uh, also they were very discreet uh, concerning uh, uh, what was happening in the house. So we learned also as a children to be very, very discreet. Uh, in the name of Jesus. So it, discretion will watch over you and understanding and discernment will guide you in the name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter three, verse 21. Proverbs chapter three, verse 21. The Bible says, my son or my daughter, let them not escape from your sight. And keep a sound wisdom and a discretion. So the commandment, let them not escape from your sight. Yes, you need to know the word of God. You should not escape from your sight. This book of the Lord, Joshua 1, uh, 8. Meditate. You need to love the word of God. But also keep sound wisdom and a discretion. You need to keep discretion. So the psalmist is that, uh, not uh, the Solomon is telling us to be very discreet. To have wisdom, sound wisdom, and be very discreet in all that we are doing. Be very discreet. My mom thought that the family loved her. Well, they loved the money. They did not really love her. So, whenever she bought uh, plots of lands, and uh, she had many uh, nephews. Uh, in my culture. Uh, your children have less, less rights than your nephews. So your a father, for instance, he will take care of his uh, brother's um, children or his sister's children more than take care of his own children. That's the kind of perverted uh, culture. Uh, so that's why even when you become a woman becomes a widow, they even kick her out of uh, the brothers of the and the sisters of the man comes and kicks that woman out with her children and they take uh, the, the possession. They are trying to change the laws of the land to destroy that kind of uh, rubbish culture. But that's not the Bible. The Bible says uh, your inheritance goes to your children. If you don't have any child, that's when they consider your brother. So we need to do the biblical kind of uh, uh, inheritance. So my mom was so happy with her family. She would buy land and she would put uh, um, nephews to be uh, supervising the work. She would build a house. And so, so all the relatives knew all the plots of lands that she had. And while she was still alive, she's still alive, they were already saying, this is not my, 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 my plot of land. She could not uh, kick them out. The land that she had in the capital city when she was in Belgium, she sent the money, she sent the money, and her sister built a house, and her sister with her husband moved in. Up to today, she, my mom had to give up. So a younger brother also tried to do the same thing. And then in the, around the 90s, when now we became saved, we understood the word of God. Then my mom had to sell, because they, he could not, she could not evict her all uh, 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 nephews because uh, they knew all the uh, plots where they were, the houses, they were even living in those houses. She could not evict them. Otherwise, it would create a problem. So she had to sell them so that the new owner would do the dirty job. So she, she had a prominent uh, plot in prominent places. She lost because of lack of uh, this question. They knew everything about uh, life. They knew, they knew everything about the investments. The fact that people like your, your blood related doesn't mean that uh, they have your best interest at heart. 
and especially when they are not Christians. And when they are Christians, <laughs> what kind of Christian are they? That's why it is good for a whole family to serve the same God and have the same understanding of the world. Otherwise, they will be jealous, envious of one another. So after that, she now learned the discretion. She, none of her relatives knew now where her plot of land were, what investments she did to also avoid envy and the jealousy and competition among the brethren. We don't have time for competition either. Those who compare themselves with others, Paul say to the Corinthian church, they are not wise. So she started now only to tell us, the children. And we also, children, we had to learn to keep our mouth uh, shut. She would tell us, like I'm telling you this, 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 but don't say anything. To you. Let it stay within uh, the family now. Discretion is very, very important. So have that wisdom. The book of uh, Psalm 112, verse 3, Psalm 112, and three, verse, uh, sorry, verse 5, Psalm 112, verse 5, he says, a good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affair with discretion. In the beginning, my mom was not guiding her affairs with discretion. She was telling everybody about her investments, about the, the plots of land that she bought. Not everybody was happy, especially not the family. And at the end, my, my, my cousins shot my mom so that <laughs> she would die and they would take the, the, the houses. She was not uh, discreet. So you do your affairs with discretion. You may lend to people, but let not everybody know how much you have in the bank account or the plots of land that you have, the houses that you have. No, 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 no. So he guides his affairs with discretion. In a marriage, be discreet. Be discreet. Not that we are paranoid. We are not paranoid either. But we don't want uh, people to use those information against us at the end. When especially you are vulnerable, many people did not know I had the problems of immigration because I sat, I sat there and I observed the way people were despising people that had immigration problem. I said they would never know that I have immigration problem. Even Papa and Mama, they did not know that I had immigration problem. I was still battling with immigration. Because I was always smiling. You don't need to be wearing a long face that people, everybody knows that you have a problem. You need to be smiling and rejoice. Even when I was sleeping in the streets of Glasgow, the church members did not know anything. I, when I would come on Sunday, I would preach with all the strength as if I, I'm empowered by the Holy Ghost. Actually, I was angry because I slept outside. Now, when all that season was over, I told them, and many of them were weeping. You mean that you were going through that, but you were always joyful and encouraging us? Yes. Because the moment I opened my mouth and I said, when I was in Dongevo, in the Adventure Center, one of the sisters, she was barren. They removed even the Faropian tube. I prayed for her. God gave her a child. But she's the one also that started to say, oh, any pastor that goes to detention center, he doesn't have any anointing. So. When I pray for your Philippian truth that were removed, so was it not the anointing of the Holy Ghost that gave you a, a little child? So I discovered how people despise those who are going through immigration. And some, when I now came out of Dongevo, the, the situation was already resolved and the Home Office uh, accepted my case. It was, uh, they, they, they will send the, the papers. Some of the pastors now in Glasgow wanted to take advantage. So one of them called me in his office on London's road. He said to me, go close your church. I want you to come here every Wednesday for my, my Bible study. I want to come every Friday, Saturday morning and Sunday at 11. That's one of our services. And I looked at him. I just said, amen, amen. So 
I did not because he was even very angry again. And then another one, a bishop called me uh, towards the Bonny Park. He sat me down. You know, I'm going to give you a minister's visa of five years, not two, two two and a half years. So much, twice it will be five years. But you need to go close your church and come here work under me. Uh, that's that's the condition. I just say amen. I mean, I see how people, because they think that you're in a vulnerable situation, they want to take advantage of you. I just smiled. Amen. It shows the hearts of the people. If you learn to keep quiet and listen, you will see where the hearts of the people are. When they want to take advantage of you, that's part of wisdom 101. Keep your mouth shut. That's the book of Proverbs. The one that even the fool, book of Proverbs, says, when he keeps quiet, everybody perceives that he's wise because you are listening to what is coming out of the mouth of the people because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth is speaking. You are revealing to you what is in the heart. And then you know, okay, I know where you are standing now. So he guides all his affairs with uh, discretion. The book of Proverbs 11 verse 22 now that this comes to, to to marriage to relationship and also to plans that god has for your life plans that god has for the church the bible says uh, proverb 11 proverbs 11 verse 22 he says as a ring of gold in the uh, in the swine's snout so is a lovely woman who lacks uh, discretion so a pig does not know the value of the gold ring that is on her snout so she takes it and swallow uh, wallows it into the, the mud because you don't know the value of that marriage not just women men as well the same unfortunately the bible the jews it's more of a patriarchal society. So they tend to accuse only women. Just like in Luke, John chapter 8, when uh, the, they quote that woman in the very act of adultery. She was in the very act. So where was the man? But they only brought the woman. So they tend always to blame only the woman. That's not true. Men also are foolish. They have zero discretion sometimes. So whether you're a man or a woman, you need to learn this question because you have something that is precious just under your nose, even attached to your nose. Something that is very precious, a gold ring. And what you are doing is you are wallowing into the mud. You are talking rubbish about your marriage, how bad it is. When actually your friend are just saying, aha, they will say, yes, she's very bad. She's very bad. They say, yes, he is very bad. No, you don't. He doesn't deserve you. She does not deserve you. And then you say, yeah, yeah. But actually what is in the heart is this. As soon as he lets her go, <laughs> I will grab her. As soon as she lets him go, I will take him as a husband. My mom was very wise. <laughs> Everybody wanted my dad, even the house help. She would be telling us, oh, in the previous uh, place where I was working, the, the, the boss was uh, uh, flirting with me and uh, so on and so forth. She's telling us, but we were the spies for our mother. So we would go and tell our mother. This is what the house help said, that in the previous place where she was working, the boss was flirting. And mom said, aha, she wants to come and take my husband. <laughs> And within a week, she's fired from a job in the name of Jesus. So we children were listening on behalf of our mother. What were the intention of the house help? In Jesus, uh, even if my mom trusted my dad, but you cannot trust the other woman, what agenda she will have. She'll come in on the, with a mini skirt to, to work. Press this, that's why we have to give them uniform. When you come to wear your uniform, <laughs> people have evil agenda. So you have something that is precious. Nobody knew that I was uh, uh, going to TBN to, to record any program because 
like I told you, 2018 already, when uh, Richard called some of the pastors that are already on TVN UK to ask them uh, what they think, if they heard of me, they already <laughs> attacked me and called, uh, told them that they should never invite me and so on and so forth. So I knew already how hostile those people were openly. So even here in Glasgow, the pastors I know already, so they did not know anything. No. The only people that knew were a few, maybe five altogether that knew. We recorded, and they only, they only saw that on, uh, it was on TV, on Facebook. The second time I was, well, the same thing. Even when we started the voice of healing, it was only when now uh, finished recording, and we start the plan now, the airing that now we told the people. Otherwise, you are going to have uh, unnecessary attacks. And people that everybody now try to call you to give you advice, wrong advice. One of them said to me in 2009, you need to come to me in, uh, in Manchester. And before you go to London, I will tell you what you need to say. I went straight to London and he was so angry with me. People want to, want to give you the advice, what they think. What did God say to you about that relationship, about that church? about that career, about that business, what did God say to you? And only what God says and his word, that's what matters. So we have something that is precious. Like the pig, we don't know the value of it. And we just wallow it into the mud. When the others, they know the value, it is a gold thing. And as soon as we drop it, they will take it. And some of them now started to call me, eh, can you give me the number? So I said, I, I cannot give you the number. They are not my friends. They just want to use me to have access to the access that I have to some people now. That's what we learned about friendship. I want you to invite me in your voice of healing program. I said, I will invite nobody. So go pray and fast as well. And pray that God will open doors. I did not know anyone. I knew Jesus and Jesus opened the door. Why don't you go and seek the face of Jesus as well? Let him open doors for you. So you know who those who just want to use you, take advantage of you. One of them even sent me a message, Pastor. Uh, Pastor Jerry, we are going to do voice of a healing crusade. We want you to come and be doing that for us. <laughs> I don't even, didn't even bother to answer. These are like vultures. They want the easy way. They don't want to pay the price. So realize what you have is very precious. If you don't know the value of it, others know the value of it. And as soon as you wallow it in the, in the mud and then it drops, they will localize where you dropped it and they will come and uh, take it because you don't know the value of what you have. Meet the children that you have. Children are a gift from the Lord. Psalm 127, Psalm 127, children are a gift from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is the reward. If you train them properly, just like arrows in the quiver of a mighty warrior, so are the children of our youth. When we train them in the way of the Lord, when they go, they will not depart from, uh, from it. I told you last time that wonderful, uh, one guy, his name is Paul Ankaya. He's from my country. He's a father. Abandoned him. Did not want the presidency. I said, that's not my, my child. The boy herself, the boy went on to study. He went on to study finance. He went to, to Ivory Coast. From Congo, he went to Ivory Coast. He became the governor of the Central Bank uh, of Africa. Both in, that, in those days, it was uh, the chief of France, there was the only one, both from Central Africa and from West Africa. But later on, they divided the chief of France from West Africa. Still had the same value, monetary value. But they now put in different kinds of beers. But before it was centralized, everything was centralized in Ivory Coast. So he became the governor of uh, the bank. That's when now his father wanted to call him, You are my son. He said, No, you're not my, my, my father. 
you did not see the potential in me. Your children are destined for greatness. Let no one put you down or put your children down. If they walk the way out of your life, they are stupid. They did not see the goal that you have. And God is going to take them places in Jesus' precious name. Look at Obama. His father, regretting that the mother went back to Kenya and had other children there. Well, what did God do? God took him from glory to glory. Thank God he had some goodness in his heart to go visit his brethren in Kenya. So, you are destined for greatness. Know what God has put in you and let no one put you down. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 6, if you don't know what you have, and you are going to lose it, and you are going to allow people to cheat you out of that the greatness that is in you, out of that great relationship, out of that great marriage, everybody has flaws. Everybody. You get closer to Brother Jerry, you will realize that he has so many of them. But you, you choose to focus on what is uh, positive. There are challenges in every situation, but you choose to focus on uh, the positive things about that situation and then you move forward. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6 it says, Do not give what is holy to the dogs. Do not give what is holy to the dogs. What is set apart for God's purpose? That's what is holy. Sanctify, set apart for the purpose of God. God has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for your life. There are some people that don't value your holiness. They don't value the price of your consecration. They count you as a common person. People were talking anyhow to Moses. I know God said to Miriam, Numbers chapter 12, Moses is not like you. You know the price that he has paid for consecration. And with you, I come and talk to you in dreams and vision. With Moses, I speak to him face to face. And she said, no, we all have the Holy Spirit. Yes, we all have the Holy Spirit, but there's a difference. Moses has to pay the price. So don't talk to Moses anyhow, because he's your, your, your younger brother. You change his diapers, and you think that you can talk to him anyhow. He paid the price for a holy life. He paid the price of the consecration. And God plagued over leprosy because she talked uh, against uh, Moses and his wife uh, that was the Ethiopian. So some people, they don't value the price that others have paid. That's why the book of Paul tells us to count those who are laboring in the word of God the worthy of double honor. Because they watch over your soul. They give account to God, those who are doing that properly. So they pay the price for the consecration. So when people don't value the price that you pay, don't waste your time. That's why even Jesus, in his own hometown, they made light of him and of his ministry. They say, what is this? What about this Jesus? Huh? His brethren, James, uh, Simon, and uh, Joseph, they are all here. His sister is also here. He grew up with us. He used to play football with us here. What is the big deal about it? Where does he get all that knowledge of the word of God? And how does he do all those miracles? They were offended. And Jesus said, the prophet is not with that uh, honor except in his own uh, uh, town among his own people. He said, let us go elsewhere. Some people will trivialize the price that you paid. And that's what also we do for Christianity. We are saved and we, we are insulting the spirit of grace by continuing to live in sin. Anyhow. You don't know what Christ uh, went through. He cost him his life to atone for your sins and you are making the light of his sacrifice. Hebrews chapter 10 from 25 to the end. We are willfully sinning, counting the blood of Jesus as if it were a common thing. It cost him his life. We are not uh, in awe of his sacrifice. 
the Holy One of Israel. Like Paul Peter said, you crucified the Holy One of Israel. You asked for, for a murderer to be released and you crucified the, the Holy One of Israel, the Prince of the Peace that God has raised him from the dead. So, if you throw what is holy, what is set apart, consecrated for God's purpose to those who have no value for it, like dogs, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The temple of the Holy Ghost. So you are set apart, consecrated. Any man who doesn't respect your body, don't waste your time with him. He needs to put a ring on your finger. Marry you before he touches your body in the name of Jesus. You are not a dog. I am not a dog either. So do the right thing. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Know who you are. You are precious to God. You have a purpose. So don't give what is uh, holy to the dogs. They don't know the price of so the, the consecration to live a holy life. One brother was always accused, attacking me. You fast too much, you fast too much. I say, okay, you don't need to fast. Like that, I say, amen, amen. Why not the Lord started to open doors, to do miracles? When now they were sick, they came for me to pray for them. I thought that I fast too much, that you only need faith. Why don't you pray yourself for your own sickness, your own cancer, and be healed yourself? And here you are attacking me. Sometimes I just, um, I pray you will heal, but I distance myself from him. I'm not going to give all this consecration to people that, that have no value for the price that I paid. I wanted to go to, to Manchester, to help another brother. He was going for another sickness. Uh, I said to God, I'm going to jump into my car at 4 a.m. and drive to go to Manchester. But God came and woke me up at 3 so that I would not drive. <laughs> and uh, he woke me up. He said, he reminded me of the story of uh, at the death of Absalom, there was a young man that wanted to saddle his, his horse and ride to uh, Jerusalem uh, to, to, to tell the king, uh, not Jerusalem, where the king was hiding, to tell the king that uh, Absalom has been killed. And Joab said to him, this is not a good news. You are not going to have the good welcome that you think that you are going to have. I say, okay, let me ride anyway. So he rode. And he didn't have the good uh, welcome that he expected. So the Lord said to him, that's what you want to do. You want to jump into your car with your horsepower under your, your hood and drive uh, uh, under your, your bonnet and drive uh, to, to Manchester, you think that they are going to love, but actually they are offended because of what God is doing with you. So they are not going to receive you. So stay. I say, uh, that's not to quote scriptures to God. How didn't you say if it is in the power of your hand to do good and you don't do it for, uh, but for, 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 for me it is now sin. I would not try to quote scripture to God so that I would escape and uh, go drive. God said, no, I'm the one who wrote it. I know what I wrote. I said to you, if you don't receive you, shake off the dust of your feet and move away. Go elsewhere. Don't give what is holy to the dogs. They don't value the consecration, the price that you pay. They would always see you as the little Jerry that you that didn't even know John 3.16. How can someone that came to us in 2007 that even did not know John 3, 16, today is now on TV, everywhere, and so on and so forth. They are offended. Like the people were offended. He's not even 50. Where does he get all that knowledge? So they are offended. So don't waste your time. Don't give what is holy to the dogs. They don't value the price of your consecration. And the Bible says as well, do not throw the pearls before the pigs. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Pearls are priceless. In those days, not today. Today they are manufactured in mass. But in those days, pearls were more expensive than diamonds. Even in 1900, two uh, earrings of uh, identical, almost identical uh, pearls were one million uh, US dollars 19. So it bought the highest skyscraper in New York with only two pearls. That's how pearls were very expensive, even up to 1900. And after that, China started to mass produce the pearls. Now it is uh, worth nothing. 
That's why Jesus did not use a diamond because a diamond did not have that value, rose, pearl. Or. So when you read the Bible, read that in context. He's not using diamond or ruby. He's using pearl because the pearl was very more expensive than all the other one. Ruby was more expensive than diamond. That's why the book of Proverbs would talk about the rubies. The virtuous woman is not talking about diamond, but about the ruby because ruby was more expensive than uh, uh, diamond. But today they found so many mines of rubies. That's why it is uh, not as expensive as uh, uh, diamond. So if you, he said, do not throw your pearls before peace. Hallelujah. For they will trample them on the, the feet and turn away and tear uh, you into pieces. See, when people don't know your value, they would always criticize you. I had some friend that would criticize me, criticize me. After they finished criticizing me for one hour, I need at least six hours of friends in tongues to uproot all the negativity. They don't know your, your value. Let the people that know your value come into your life from this day forward. Don't share your dream with people that uh, don't value you at all. They always see you as a little child, as someone that is dumb, as someone that they taught. They don't know that God has now transformed you, renewed your mind, and uh, prospered you. They don't value you anymore. They were always they were happy when you were under them. They were happy when you were without uh, uh, any job, without any qualification, without any degree, without any employment, without any paper. They were happy when you were needy, but they are not happy when they think that you are escaping the control. When now you are no longer relating with them, but you are relating with people that are above them. Some of them even call me, don't talk to this person. I said, why will you be forbidding me to talk to this person? The person is the general she of your church, so why should I not talk to him? Because they want to, me to, whatever connection I would have, they want it to be through them. No, God bypassed them and cut them off and connected me just that are directly with the people that are directly with the director of TBN UK and TBN Europe, directly with the general of the church. I don't need any middleman anymore. But they still see you as the person that did not know John 3.16. That's uh, the memory that they have of you. Some people see still David as the one fighting. And that's even in our preaching. We still see David as the man that is fighting with a sling and a stone. That was the humble beginning of David. And we tried to help him take, take my armor. He said, I don't even know how to use an armor. Continue to read the book of Samuel. David now was you wielding the sword of Goliath. He went to the temple of the priest. When he was escaping, he said to the priest Abiatar, give me the sword of Goliath. He was fighting with a claymore sword. The longest ever. He knew how to wield the sword. He was now wearing the full armor of gold. He started with the, with the stone and the sling. I did not stop there. So don't always remember, and unfortunately, we always remember David as David and Goliath in the stone. That was his humble beginning. God built him an army. So some people will still see you as the one with the sling and the stone. Some people will still see you as Joseph, the slave in the house. Cleaning, trying to escape from Potiphar's house. They still, the image that they have of you, you still in Dongevel, in that detention, in that dungeon with the bottle and the baker. When already God has made you the governor over Egypt, the biggest nation. Now your brethren are bowing before you. You are no longer the little brother that they sold into slavery. So God has great things in store for you. So when people don't see that you have a pearl in you, and pearls, they, you have a shell. And uh, sometimes a grain of sand enters and the shell has a muscle inside. For a pearl to be for, uh, formed, a bacteria, and uh, an agent need to enter that shell. 
So when the bacteria enters that shell or a grain of sand enters that shell, so that's irritating the muscle. So what the muscle will do now, it will uh, coat that uh, bacteria to, uh, to isolate it so that it will not uh, uh, spread all over the, the muscle. So every day it would be putting a new layer, a new layer, a new layer, because it is that grain of sand or that bacteria is irritating uh, the whole uh, the whole shell and over the years now that's why when you have a pearl in life listen if you never go through anything in life you will never become a pearl joseph went through something that's why he became a pearl it was priceless brother jerry went through something everyone that is something or somebody went through something in life if you avoid the pain process before the glory there is a crucifixion before uh, resurrection day there's a good friday we don't call it bad friday we call it good though it just was nailed on it it is a good if you escape a pain you never get the glory that's why if you suffer with me you are going to reign with me So pearls, they go through lots of irritation in life. Imagine if you have a grain of sand in your eyes, how you have to, you, you go and wash your eye into the, to kind of remove that grain of sand. And the muscle in the, inside that shell is even tender than the eye. So imagine how it is irritated inside. So when we've gone through that process that God has brought something good out of it, he has brought the beauty from ashes. Don't allow anyone to come and trample it under the feet. No. And if anyone doesn't see your value, they always see you as the person that they met 10 years ago when God has brought you at advance. Some people also, you came in the department and uh, very soon you've uh, become a head of department. They see, oh, this young man, this young man just came yesterday. Why is he now <laughs> my boss? Well, <laughs> you paid the price to be that uh, at, uh, now the head of the department. And they would always try to belittle your, your, your role of a leader in that department. Don't allow anyone. You need to learn to put them to the place. I'm the one that is the head of the department here. You give your suggestion. I will go through it. And then I'll get back to you. I've been here before. Say yes. You give your suggestion. But the last decision, I'm the one who takes it. Because I'm the head of the department. I am the manager. I am the pastor. So let nobody be. Some people even know more scripture than the pastor, but they are not the pastors. So when they see that they are criticizing everybody, everything that the pastor is saying, he should have said that, she should have said that, and so on and so forth. And they come with the so called suggestion. The letters kill. It is the spirit that gives life. Thank you for your suggestion, but that is not the message that God gave us. Some people would call me, when are you going to invite me in your church? I said, the Lord has not told me to invite you to preach in my church. And this is the church of Jesus. It is not my church. So I need to tell him who should I invite and why should I invite people that are from outside when I can train people that are inside. David trained his uh, people. Acts chapter 13, they trained the people that were in end church. They became the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers. Train the people, pay the price to train the people. They will become mighty men and might like David did. And after they've gone through the process, let no one belittle them in the name of Jesus. In the beginning, it used to bother me. And they always said to me, Oh, I'm I'm no longer, I'm, I, I don't want to come to this church. I want to go to the other. I say, Amen. I say, Go. So now also when they call me, Pastor Jerry, pray for me. I say, well, you said that uh, one of them said to me, I only go to assemblies of God. I don't go to any other church. I say, amen. 
You feel that I'm asking you to come to the house of prayer. But now when he was in trouble, Pastor Jerry said, but you only go to the assemblies of God. Let the assemblies of God pray for you as well. Why now when you're in trouble, they cannot pray for you? Since you despise my holiness, my consecration, you despise the pearl, the, you count it as a common thing, the price that I have paid. So let them also pay the price and pray for you. Don't let anyone put you down. Love them, but God is taking you places in the name of Jesus. You don't need to quarrel with anyone. Second Timothy chapter 2, the Bible says, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 24, Paul is talking to Timothy's son. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 24, he says, A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but he must be gentle, or she must be gentle to all, able to teach and also be patient. You don't. That's why Isaac did not quarrel with them. They quarreled with him. He, he left them with the well. He went and dug another one. When I left the new the other church that I was under, I gave them all the money of the church, all the equipment, everything I gave it to them, the computers. Even they even called the, 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 the church uh, people. Said, He's no longer part of our church. So all of you get out. I said to them, please go, because I'm no longer under that church. But they all left. So I owe them nothing except the love of God. So we don't quarrel with anybody. We know God has called us. We don't compete with anyone. We know God has called us. He's going to make room for us. God is going to make room for you as well in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to stop here because if I delve into what I want to teach here, I will not stop. So I will take one question from what we know. I will tell you about uh, brother in First um, Samuel chapter nine, from verse twenty-seven. Only, only verse twenty-seven. Okay. Samuel went to see the Saul. Went he was looking for the lost donkey, and he went to see the prophet. Yeah, Samuel. So the prophet told him, "Don't worry." The donkey has been found, okay? After they had the, the, the feast and he wanted to send him away. But Saul was with his servant. There are some things that are only meant for you, not for other people, for you alone. So now, verse 27, the first time of chapter 9. And as they were going down to the outskirts of the city, Samuel said to Saul, tell your servant to go on ahead of us. And uh, he went on. But you stand here while... Uh, stand here a while that I may announce to you the word of the Lord. There are some prophecies about your life that nobody else should know it. Nobody else. So you need to, even with God, you need discretion. Because it is a military. If, if you go and open your mouth, they would kill everybody who wants to be a king. And now Samuel says, You are the next king. Keep your mouth shut. Otherwise, they would uh, behave you already. Because you are going, you are the, they would kill your dream in the in the in the crib. So chapter uh, 10 of 1 Samuel from verse 1. So in secret, even his servant did not know. So in secret, now Samuel took the flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, It is because the Lord has anointed you. Or, uh, uh, commander over his inheritance. So he anointed Saul in secret before he did it in public. In chapter 11, he's going to do that in public. But he's doing that in secret. God would appear to you in secret. Jesus appeared to me in secret. He told me what to do. I started to write for 10 years. Uh, those my weekly meal. We started to record them. Nobody in the previous show that I, I was knew. The church people did not know because they were part of the other church. I did not want them to leak it. So I never gave them any email. I sent them one, I based their prayer, and then they leaked it. So I stopped because they would kill the baby. In the in the in, in the crib. 
this, you need to be able to keep even a secret for 10 years, 14 years. And when it is out, it is too late. When now, so God knows what he's doing. People think that you are coming from the bush. You are not coming from the bush. God has been preparing you in the back of the desert because if he exposed you earlier, people would have killed you, killed your vision, discouraged you. I thought everybody was my friend, even though they were pastors. So I would tell them, God is saying to me, I'm going to be on TV. And they say, no, that's not you. God is showing me I will be filling stadiums. So that's not you. God is showing that I will be preaching on the same TV channel. And I will be preaching healing like Benny. They say, that's not you. Everything that I saw for them, it was not me. They could not see that God would be able to lift me above them. So God says, shut up. Don't ever tell them any dream that I give your vision. So I never, from 2009, and they asked me, don't you have any more visions? You no longer share them. I say, I have plenty of them. <laughs> but why don't you share them? I smiled, because you were always killing my visions. If you don't learn to keep quiet, then we see he came back home. Uh, that first time at chapter 10, from verse 14 to verse 16, his uncle came even to your relatives. There are some things you cannot disclose to your relatives. So his uncle, his uncle heard that he went with Samuel. Ah, yeah, there's a prophecy there. The, the, the prophet is very sharp. So then Saul's uncle said to him from verse 14, first time chapter 10. Yeah, so Saul's uncle said to, uh, to, to him and his servant. So he questioned the servant. That's why uh, Samuel sent away the servant of Saul. Because if the servant knew the secret that Saul was anointed in secret to be king, he would have told the, the, the whole relative. Because people are going to be happy. Hallelujah. My master is going to be the next king. He would go and spread it all over the place. But the servant wasn't privy to that information. So he came and asked Saul. He asked the servant. The servant did not know. He asked Saul, where did you go? So he said, okay, I took uh, I, to look for the donkeys, okay? When we saw that uh, they were nowhere to be found, we went to Samuel. So, and Saul's uncle said, aha, tell me, tell me, please, tell me what Samuel said to you. Now listen, Saul at least was wise in those days. He said, <laughs> discretion. Saul said to his uncle, he told me, uh, so he told us pl uh, plainly about the donkeys. The tell him about the donkey, the worthless things. <laughs> so he told him about the donkeys. The Bible study of he lost. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a secret Bible study. <laughs> the Lord, the Bible study, the lost the donkey. Many people do not understand. I'm the only one who under understand the nitty gritty of the lost donkey. But when everything is going to be fulfilled, that now I would finish. Uh, that the Bible study. I'm only telling you what I want you to hear. The real thing I'm not telling you. Until at least nine years, 10 years, then I would open my mouth. Like I've opened my mouth after almost 10, after 10 years of writing those my weekly milk. You need to be discreet. Because otherwise the enemy will kill it. So he told about the word flashing about the donkeys that they have been found, but about the matter of the kingdom, the real matter, the strategies of God, he did not tell him what Samuel said to him. This question, even the book of Daniel, God appears to Daniel, tells him about the seven weeks count until the, the coming of Christ. So people could count from the book of Daniel when the Messiah will come. And it was dead right. They that was, that's why Matthew chapter 1 counts the generation, 14 generations. They are, they are counting exactly how Daniel uh, prophesied it. And it came to pass. But there were other things now. God said to Daniel, he said, Daniel, this one, or your ears only, don't tell anyone. And Daniel sealed the book. He did not disclose. In the book of Revelation, the same thing. He told John about so many things. And I said, John, you are my friend. I want to tell you another thing that nobody should know, only the two of us. This one, tell it to the churches. But this one is only for your ears. And John said, that one, he sealed it. He did not 
tell anything, anything to anyone. He, he died with the secret. Paul, he says, he was caught up into heaven 14 years ago. He saw things. God revealed unto him the strategies. He said it was not lawful for him to, to, to tell, tell it to any human what he saw. The strategy that God gave him. May you learn to keep it quiet. May you learn discretion. Otherwise, God will not trust you with greater matters. It gives us the wisdom of a serpent. He said, be wise as serpent and harmless as doves. Why? The serpent knows that everyone wants to kill it. So he hides. When it is small, he hides. He hides. By the time you discover the serpent, you would discover how big he is because of the skin. Because every time he grows, he removes the skin so that uh, he, he can make room for the new skin that will go. So when you discover that there's a snake in your house or in your compound, you will just see the, the, the skins that he has left behind. This, this side, this side, this side. Then you will know that truly a big anaconda is into my compound. But when now he's going to raise his head to strike you, too late. He has grown beyond the place where you can crush him. Now he's a force to reckon with. When he bites you of his venom, you are going to die. When that uh, fight, uh, that um, anaconda would uh, uh, rub himself around your 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 rib cage and break it, you suffocate and you die. He has become a force to reckon with. So there's a wisdom that we need to learn from the serpent that Jesus tells us: be wise as serpent. Until you are a force to reckon with, don't open your mouth. Time will fail us. But I hope you've taken something home and you are going to apply it in your life. In Jesus' precious name, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to give you all the glory and all the praise. Give us wisdom. We are lacking wisdom. We are opening our mouth too much to the wrong kind of people that don't wish us any good at all but we think they are our friends. You taught us about friendship. Now you are teaching us about discretion, how to be discreet. There are some matters we need to keep them until it is the appropriate time to, to share them. We are not paranoid, no. We are not distrusting if people either know, but uh, not everybody should be privy to, the, to all, our, all information about our life. And I pray that you are going to help us to decipher what to say and what not to say. Who to share those things with and who not to share those things with because we are not that close. And even if we are not that close, do you allow us to share it with them? Help us, my king, to realize that we have a gold ring in our snout, in, on, in our nose. Let us not wallow it into the mud because we don't know the value of what we have. We are precious. Whatever pain we went through, it is because you want to bring out the pearl out of uh, what uh, uh, we have. And you said, well, once we've gone through that pain and the pearl has come out of us, you say people will even be able to sell everything that they have, come from far countries to go and buy that pearl. That's how the kingdom of God is. If we pay the price, we go through the pain, we go through the irritation of life, and the pearl is formed in us, People will even sell all that they have and come to want to buy that pearl. That's how the kingdom of God is. If they find the gold that is in us, even if it is inside of the mud, they will sell everything to come and buy that plot of land because they know that there is gold in us. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. People are stumbling over the dirt, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power might not be of us, but of God. And I pray that we will see ourselves the way you see us. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. I love you. May God bless you. And may God keep you.